Oh my goodness, we got another box. We got another box from where? It's Scout Comics time. Dude, I accidentally threw my box out, but you have one. I kept my box because I'm have, good. I have my comics, though. You kept the comics. That's really I what did. matters. Comic fam, it was a great month. We're chatting the Scout Box. We're chatting about a publishing company doing things right by collectors, hooking up the fam with an ability to stay up on comics like really no other company that I know of. Right? This is such a... It's such an easy, an easy, it's easy. That's really my favorite part. It's awesome. It's cool, but I'm a lazy son of a bitch. And like, <laughs> it's, you get, you get so much in this box and without having to do much work. So is that honesty plug? nugget there for you. Well, if you use code Tom 101, you get 10% off your box and anything on scoutcomics.com. We buy these boxes. We do. Because sometimes there's goodies and I got lucky this month and comic fam, you're actually going to get lucky because we have a bunch of giveaways to do today. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and let's chat about what was in this box. Look at me keeping the box. But still tossing it. All right, we had a bunch of really cool covers this month. Let's get them all on the screen because they all deserve some love. And notice every box has an ash can in it. And you know what? This ash can is the recount. And we've already chatted about this on Comic Karma. We did. But That's I'm very excited. I left, I left my ash can in the other room because we had talked about it already. Well, they only made a thousand of these and they hooked up members in their box. You can find this at LCS's and we sent out 50 of them in the mystery mail call because Scout Comics yes, are homies. And what we're going to do is chat about some of these comics because first off, a bunch of the covers were banging. I'm looking at Everglade Angels. This one makes you stop, doesn't it? It does. It's got this cool baseball storyline going on there. And now it's the team of it's the girls baseball team getting like stuck in the swamp with some mysterious happenings going on. And issue one had a pretty cool cliffhanger. Issue two is the end of the series. So, hey, you like those short stories? I do. I like a nice self-contained situation, and it doesn't really get much shorter than two issues, except yeah. for one issue. I guess. Well, you know what I really like? Hmm. The art in Canopus. I am so intrigued. I peeked at issue four because this is a new title to me. I haven't read it yet, and I actually had to close the book. Really? Why do you think I had to close the book? Why'd you have to close the book? Because the art is so wild that I have to start from the beginning. I really like the panel layouts. There's a lot of two-page spreads with a bunch of really tiny panels showing, you know, the really quick progressions. And it plays with panels and layouts a lot. Cannabis is cool. Okay, we have to come back to that one, especially this next one here, because Wretches number six was in both of our boxes. We didn't get all the same comics, so stay tuned, comic fam. But I happen to know that this is the last issue of the series. And James Roche is a fan of the show, and he hooked up the members of the comic fam with so many Kickstarter exclusives of the first appearance when he first launched this title that I want to do this title right. And then we got a new one, a new one that I'm, I'm intrigued by because I'm getting a little bit of a post-apocalyptic vibe. Right, I'm getting kind of like a Walking Dead vibe from this. This is our second uh, Scout box, and this is issue five of Midnight Sky, but this is the first appearance of Midnight Sky in our Scout box. So again, like with... Like with wretches, this is one that makes me want to look back and kind of get more, get more caught up. They're not all issue number ones, so sometimes you can either just jump right in with issue two or three and, and try and get your feet wet and see what it's like that way, or maybe like Tom's doing with Canopus, like track down the other ones and then really get the full story. Absolutely, we're gonna have to come into the mic and chat about that in the future. But these boxes were a little different. You had a print in yours. I got a print in my scout box this time, and it's actually a print of. A comic that we discussed in the first Scout Box video we did. It's from Murder Hobo. Serendipitous, man. Good word choice. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I was a big fan of Murder Hobo last time, so I'm actually pretty glad to have a piece of it here. Okay, and you know what I had that was different than your box? Dude, I was so stoked you to see this. You didn't get this print. I never, no, I did not get the print, but you know what I did get? Um, we both got a copy of Gut Ghost Trouble with Sawbuck Skeleton Society, but you know what's crazy is that this right here is a variant that's a one in a thousand that was in my box currently being listed online for like 20 bucks by the way wow there's a lot of variants in here like we got i know uh there's a variant for grit for white ash and there's one for vlad dracul so you don't just get the main covers and stuff they like to shake it up and and give you different things which is it's kind of cool adds to the fun well what's fun about gut ghost this particular issue i actually had an opportunity because what you have in your hands is a mignola cover but it's in color and the interiors are in color. And for those of you who weren't around 
the mystery mail call, join you know to their community service where we send the comic books to our members every month and they support our show. I did a Comic Tom exclusive to this very issue at the start of pandemic. That's how long this issue was delayed. Was there even a time before pandemic? It feels like this is our lives now. This is crazy, dude. It is kind of weird to think how much time has I think passed. I like the black and white one better. But you know what? I, I kind of do too, man. This yeah. is pure Mignola right here, baby. Exactly. But you know what? The interiors of my copy that we took to press, it, the colors weren't done yet. Oh. So this right here is a very unique copy. So we're going to do a giveaway of my Mignola exclusive to this very issue. So comment down below. Let us know what you think because, dude, oh my goodness, Gut Ghost was amazing. It's amazing. That's a good word for it. It's uh, it's unique. Dude. It's extreme. Oh. It, like, the fact that it's in color, it was like rereading it again. The color is actually one of the things I, I thought was the most uh, remarkable about, about Gut Ghost. Enzo's pastel work is mm -hmm. like no other his ability to like draw creative monsters clearly earned him the mignola stamp of approval because he did a variant for gut ghost and this issue is so crazy because the monsters in this story like the creations are just so wild and weird. so weird and yeah. disturbing and how enzo writes them into situations that just make you go this is why i love comic books i mean gut ghost is a character who uses his intestines in very unique ways he gives himself legs in this run heck he even reproduces a baby gut ghost out of his guts yeah it's all, it's all like squeegee and pink and it's it's it makes you kind of just like like I, this is funny i'm not sure what i'm reading but i'm enjoying it it's very silly it gets out there, man, and every time Enzo puts a new character on the pages, everyone loves it, man, because like, it's so cool. It's so unique. There's a lot of characters in here, and they're having a lot of conversations with each other, and I got the feeling that this is not the first issue in of Gut Ghost. I, 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 like, There's introductions that need to be made before this for me to fully gather what I'm reading. But it's not even really about that, right? I kind of like it better having no idea what's going on. You open this book, and it's just total insane randomness coming at you, and it's like... It's like the best kind of adult cartoon, but in a, in a comic book form. Oh, my goodness. And you know what? I was gifted in my box at random. And this happens to members in the community who get boxes from Scout. You remember how much I love Loggerhead? Yeah, Loggerhead is definitely what I would call a Tom book. I think I even called it that when I was... You did. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a very horror-focused monster story. It takes place in a swamp. It's got this like almost Ninja Turtle-looking creature. But he's but way more savage. Way dude. scarier. Yeah. All right. Brian Silverbacks, he did original art and they shipped it randomly to members in Scout's box. And I got one. I didn't. You didn't. No. And I'm sure there's some members of the community who would be really happy to get some original art. So comment down below. We're not just doing a giveaway for the gut ghost today. Ah. Somebody's going to also get this sketch. We did get Loggerhead in the last box, so you don't need two copies. You I, get, you're right. I you don't. Know, give that one to the comic fan. That's, That's right. Cool. So comment down cool. below. Someone's going to get a double giveaway, yeah. which is pretty cool. Okay. Let's get into... I mean, dude, let's just get right into some of the sexual tension. You know, let's continue mm -hmm. some of the conversation from last week because we had a couple titles that we got issue twos on. Right. Yeah. We had issue one of It Eats What Feeds It in which, our previous Scout Box. Which was part of like the more spoiler section of the video. We like to do light spoilers because a lot of these you're going to be getting into and we don't want to ruin anything. But we're going to reserve kind of one at the end that has already been out to talk a little bit more about. Right. And Today since, we're going to do two. <laughs> since we talked about It Eats What Feeds It last time, you know, we don't have to go too far into it. But safe to say the story progresses dude it progresses in exactly what i was hoping it to progress to sure yeah we had a uh, i don't want to say high hopes for this kid kenny in the in the storyline dude i wanted kenny to have some fun right? this kid he's not a kid he's a young adult yes. but he's in a very very seductive situation he's a little foolish in my view so i, I feel like i to win dude yeah, i, I feel for win. him He's in this position right now at the end of issue one where he's hit with some, I don't know, man. You know, I was I was hoping it was what it seemed, and it was. I was worried for him, yeah. And, and it turns out uh, Kenny and, and uh, I don't remember what her name Francis. is. Francis. Francois. Francois. Yes, Kenny and Francois, they develop a little bit of a relationship that I honestly was kind of not expecting. So that's cool. That's cool to see where the story progresses. And this ends with a pretty gnarly cliffhanger. That's leading right. Leading us into the final third issue, which I'm... 
very much looking forward to getting in our next Scott box or whenever that comes out. Well, you know that we saw panels of what looked like to be a creature. We were hoping there was a creature, but we didn't get confirmation in issue one. Issue two has a reveal at the end that is worth reading. Oh my goodness, yes. man. Yes. Does this being deliver? Yeah, and I'm assuming that's what the, the title is referring to. The it of it eats it eats what feeds it. That's gotta be it in the attic. Oh, and last thing on the subject before we chat about the next comic that we got to discuss. I'm very happy that they took the narrative outside the home. Agreed. There was a, there was a, in my mind, there was a, a need of a, a setting shakeup and it was good to get out of that foggy house. Yeah. It makes that house that much more mysterious when you enter back in. Right. Okay. Next one on this pile right here. Yasmin, dude. Ugh. Oh my gosh. I was okay. I wasn't sure where this story was going to go from issue one. I had some ideas. I, I kind of got some vibes of, of where they could take us on this ride here. And oh my goodness. They went there. They went, dude, they, they really went there. It's about as dark and heavy of a subject as a comic book could have. Real talk, dude. I could not put it down though. Yeah. It might be my... I keep going back and forth between which book is my favorite out of all these scout books that we've been going down, but Yasmin is a top contender. If it's not my number one, it's my number two. Okay, so we told you issue one. Or three. We're, we're re, uh, top two or three. See, right? Is right? It, it's, it's good. It's That's a good there. sign, yes. comic fam. I can't decide. <laughs> but, Damn it. Well, issue one, we were getting a setup. We knew that we were going to learn about this girl's life from the Middle East and what she was experiencing during like political turmoil, but then now her day-to-day -day American life, and we're finding out about her past. There's a gap of oh, two years man. that we got set up in issue one, and you kind of wonder what happens in the two years between ISIS invading Iraq and their family being forced to flee from the new house they just bought, which sucks. That's terrible luck. They had to flee the house, the flee the city, flee the country. There's two. There's a two-year gap between then and, and her family settling into their new house in, I believe, Iowa in 2016. Issue two kind of delves into what goes on in that in that time gap. It's so sad. It's yeah. It's so hardcore, man. It's real. That's what I love about this issue. Yes. Like, it's one thing to have a... You know what's actually really interesting? Because this is like... It's fiction, you know? It, it's, it's kind of historical fiction to a degree. That's not the only thing that's historical fiction on this table. Right. Yeah, that's actually a common theme. There's in, in uh, my, Some of my favorite books from this box are not true stories, but they are real life they 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 happen, you know. Yasmin isn't a you know, true story, but this is real. This is happening to people in the world, and in that same vein, if you will, to use a blood reference, I believe you're talking about Vlad. Oh, and we're gonna be getting to that one, but we gotta save that one to the end because the oh. comic fam. Well, they 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 gave us a couple options. We gave them a couple options. We gave them options and then they said, yo, this is what we want you to do. So They what, made a clear choice for us. Okay, we said, yo, are we going to catch up on North Bend or are we going to catch up on White Ash? And wow, did people vote on White Ash? And they basically just created a new show for us, I think. We were planning this show out today and debating slash discussing on how we were going to bring this review to light. You know, the audience, the comic fam has, has chosen that we should discuss White Ash over North Bend. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to make a community show. And when we have the community vote on titles that they want us to discuss on the mic, we're going to come back to the table, but not just myself and Ryan. We're going to bring a third guest. And specifically, we are going to bring on guests from the community. Should we spoil who's coming first? Is that what do it, man. Do it. We're going to be talking about White Ash. All of it. The whole... Well, we have five issues here. That's right. So one through five, White Ash, we're going to be talking with none other than comics with Bueller. That's right. We just discussed it. He is down to join us on the mic. So stay tuned for that. And let's get into some of the spoiler talk this week. Because, dude, oh my gosh, I was a little disappointed that you weren't as hyped up about Grit. No. But we're going to chat about Grit I didn't Grit even grab right it. Now. We're talking about Grit, I guess. But I went straight for Dracula. You just want to chat about Vlad Dracula. Well, I, I get to it, book, Ryan. Man. Damn it. Hold your horses. Ugh. No, we got to talk about Grit because this was actually, I would say, one of my favorite raids of the week. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, I love me some monster stories. And here's the thing. You do. I just finished The Witcher. And I've never played the Witcher video game. Ooh. I fell in love with the show on Netflix, though. You know, this, this elite 
warrior that's fighting monsters that's kind of paid to paid to hire you know what happened and how can i help and remember i don't work for free like a bounty hunter like a mercenary for monsters that's right like you call this person when there's a, a job that a normal kind of like exterminator i guess kind of can't do can't seriously think i'm gonna chase down your goat if you got like a a crazy dragon rampaging through your village. This is the person you would call. And uh, Grit is a comic kind of in that same vein. This is some of the notes that I wrote when I read this book for the first time. Weird as F. Yeah. It's kind of got two distinct halves in the story. And the second half of the story is, I think, what you meant there. The weird kind of monster that we're introduced to. Okay, so we have a story where our lead character, he's old man Barrow. And clearly he's kind of a legendary character to a degree. Like people know that he's got a history and that you don't want to mess with this guy. But he gets called in to deal with a troll problem because some farmers are having issues with trolls. We have a world where trolls just cause havoc sometimes. Yeah, and they're pretty tough, as trolls can tend to be. So instead of trying to solve it yourself, that's something you kind of contact a professional for. Thus, we meet Mr. Barrow. This story written by Brian Wickman and art by Kevin Castanero is superb. It's simple at times, especially when you want to get a shot of just like what this barren landscape right. and this barren forest Barren is a very good look. word for it. There's a lot of empty skies with not a lot of trees, not a lot of clouds, not a lot going on in the background. But and the on the one hand, you might, you might go, oh, that's lame. But then on the other hand, you're like, no, wait, this is a really like kind of devastated, broken, gross world with not a lot happening. And it's supposed to be that level of like depressing and dour when old man borrow gets face to face with these multiple like the civilization of trolls essentially you see that the lack of detail in some of the early panels it were purposeful because oh my god he's saving it he's saving it for yeah. the creatures and for the fighting scenes because this character just takes out the trolls like it's like super easy but he also stumbles upon a cult that's like doing some apocalyptic stuff like this story goes deep another direction it's not trolls that are actually the he's not just problem. like a troll hunter yeah that's just a setup for him to find this creepy cult in the middle of the woods that's doing this creepy cult spell to raise a demon out of the ground and then they're kind of like oh wait this is actually working and there's an actual demon coming out of the ground then the demon just murders all of them, murders, you know, he's a demon. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a giant, a, like, humanoid. It's I don't even know insane. if I'd say humanoid. It's pretty distinctly not. Yeah, it's, it's well, there's eyes. At human. The, there's, there's skull faces at the very top of it. Yeah. And then there's also arms and hands. But it's a giant creature that looks impossible to defeat. And I think also, like, all the violence that takes place between the trolls and our lead character it's so like Quentin Tarantino esque. I think that's what caused this creature to come up because it seems to me that the creature is made of blood. Mm. So I'm wondering if all of this bloodshed between, well, there was no between. It was pretty one sided between the, the old man and all those trolls. I wonder if that was responsible for kind of like a blood sacrifice, you know, to awaken the monster. Yeah, well, the civilization, like this cult is up to no good, like raising this being up, all this violence, all this blood manifesting this creature that looks so scary. The cult, their faces, it, it, I keep bringing up mimetic on the mic, but that's, dude, you got to read this. I haven't read book, it yet. Don't, spo don't spoil it. Dude, you got to read it because like the terror. Talk about that one. Talk and how scary it is on these panels. I I'm just getting this vibe. It's just, it's super dark, grotesque. I love it, man. Yeah, that was a that was a really cool monster. And I, I, I when I started this book and I thought it was just gonna be like an old man, you know, hunting trolls in the woods, like, oh, okay, you know, that's that's cool. I've seen that before. But and then it turns into this halfway through his troll mission. It's not even like he finishes the troll thing and goes back and finds this other thing. It's like his original goal is interrupted with this sharp turn into weirdness with a blood, you know, blood monster. And I like I like that aspect of it. It uh it takes a twist and it goes in a different direction and then my favorite part, honestly, about this issue is the last page. It ends with him kind of walking off into the distance and some voiceover narration that kind of gives you some history and background to the guy and, like, raises some questions about his own personal history. And for me, that's the most interesting part of is, is what he's like as a, as a person, what his background is, which we don't really get into. You don't learn a lot about the character. And we finish off, I think, it's it, two weeks in a row, pick of the week for you. We're, we're in agreement. Is that, is that right? I mean, for me, it's Vlad Dracul. Yeah, Holy Honestly, Lee smokes, dude. When I pulled this out of the stack and I looked at it, I was immediately turned off. First of all, I know Tom's gonna I'm, Tom's gonna love it. Tom loves vampires. Tom loves horror. I figured Tom would be all over this. I figured it would not be my cup of tea because I'm not the biggest like vampire person. And I see Dracula 
and I'm immediately like, oh, this is about Dracula. This is about Count Dracula. This is a classic vampire horror story. Ooh, the other way around. It's, it's, it's not that. That's yeah. not what you get. Vlad Dracula is someone that I knew of, but I didn't have a whole lot of history about. But what happened is I was reading this comic book and I got to like the first, I don't know, 10 pages. It's and a then thick I, one too. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a yeah. lot here. It's the biggest oh. book in the box for sure. Oh, it's huge. And you know what? Every page is drawn beautifully. It is just a work of art in these pages. And after 10 pages, I had to stop. I closed the book. I'm not, I'm not joking. Yep. And I'm like, this story is too accurate it, to the little bit that I knew. Yeah, I got that same feeling too. Once you once you open it and you start reading it and you're like, oh, this is this is historical. This feels like a it almost feels like a like a kind of Game of Thrones kind of thing. It's about politicians in a way. It's about like kings and and rulers of states and negotiations that go on between different nations and and there's a lot happening here and it's it uses real places and real dates and it's real people. This is a rather historical story. Vlad Dracula is the real life dictator one of the worst dictators he's got upwards of eighty thousand deaths to his name and one of the most demented leaders of the world in like the 1400s yeah vlad dracula is what dracula was based off of this is a character known as vlad the impaler right and that's for me, I kind of have him in the same category as like Jack the Ripper, like a like a historical kind of monster, really, that I, I know of and I kind of know the general story of, but I've never really taken a deep dive into something. And I don't, I don't think this is a one shot. I'm interested to see what happens in the following, you know, the following issues in the story. Because, again, like I was saying earlier, this is very much kind of a story about political machinations and there's there's some negotiations that he uh, attends to with some kind of like dignitaries from I don't remember exactly where other, what other country they came from, but they came to visit Vlad Dracula at his estate, and they didn't uh, they didn't leave in the same condition they arrived in. I Their guess. kappas were fully detated, my friend. Correct, they got Ed trucked. That's right, and this was the point of the story where I had to close the book because I knew that this type of moment actually took place this is something that this dictator was known to have done and i went searching and oh my goodness these pages are accurate and then i had to go back in i love when when stories do that too when they kind of ignite something in you and make you want to go research and like learn something that actually happened this dude would torture and do some of the craziest stuff to human beings that i've ever read things that he would do to his enemies were legendary they were spawning ideas in later fiction they were so horrific and this is the story that's going to tell it in comic form yes I, I i can't say enough how much of a pleasant surprise this was because i did not expect i was expecting something much more classically like a like a classic dracula story something played out and that i've already you know we've all read dracula. You, know, you know how that goes you've seen the movie you know you know how vampires are well this has nothing to do with vampires this is a real life historical read and i think for that it sets it apart from everything else that comes in the scout box this month and it is my pick of the whole box well you know what while we're on the vampire subject something that we can kind of relate to the vampire narrative is that vlad dracula was known to dine amongst the fallen soldiers his own as well as his enemies and he was known to like to dip his bread right. in their blood yeah. this dude drank and ate his enemy's blood so you can you can kind of see how the uh the the stage was set for uh bram stoker to write dracula in the, in the 1800s a lot of a lot of creepy stuff here a lot of foundational vampire stuff and i'm wondering if they're going to lean into that at all but i, I kind of don't want that honestly I, I i love the historical nature of this comic and again that's what makes it stand out for me that's why it's my favorite new comic in this box Shout out to Matteo Strugo and Andrea Muti. I believe that's how you say your name. It's, uh, the art in particular, I think, I think was really cool in this one. Like you mentioned earlier, to me, it feels like paintings. Like you're looking at like historic, like it's very historical. So it's like you're walking through a museum and seeing old time paintings from that time period. It's kind of done in that style, which you can see because they are no doubt images being placed right here by our fantastic editing team. So check out, check out this one. Uh, speaking from somebody who had kind of a, a low bar when i opened the book i was 
very pleasantly surprised. Comic fam, you reading anything from Scout? Let us know in the comment section below. Any independent comic books we want to hear from you. And as always, hit the subscribe button because you know we're going to be coming back on the mic to chat more about Scout comic goodness. All the time. It's exciting. I'm excited for Scout Box number three. Uh, it's not here yet, but when, when it does get here, you need to let me know because I want to read it.